In this video, I want to discuss the best scalable architectural practice which you should be following as a full stack developer when you're building your front end and back end. And I'm gonna justify why that is a great option. Let's go ahead and start. Now, this video is for people who are doing moderate to large size projects. It's not for people who are doing small size projects because the approach for that would be way much simpler. So only follow this video if you're trying to build a decent size, mid size to large size project with the help of a scalable infrastructure on front end and back end, irrespective of the technologies which you're using at back end. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so in order to understand this first, let us actually understand how a typical application might work. So I'm going to take example of Node and Express in this, but this is mostly like backend tech agnostic, right? You can pick up any other technology as well, PHP plus Laravel, anything which you want, it can work with that. So a standard application would look like following. You have a server, let's say this is an EC2 server and you have a client browser, they send the request to you. This EC2 machine sends the files, let's say index.html in this case, and maybe this index.html makes an API request which goes to one of these routes in Express, which is like app.post or app.get or anything. And that is also handled by the same application. And these static assets, for example, are either served by Nginx here or maybe just by Express using app express.static, right? Not app.static, express.static. So, and you can just do this and call it a day, right? But this is not fundamentally a good architecture for your front end and back end because you're doing a lot of work, including both front end and back end and database as well, potentially on a single machine. Let's understand a different sort of architecture and why that would have a few more benefits over this. So this is the architecture we also use on codedam.com, which is an amazing site to become a full stack developer, at least for now, we are adding more learning paths. But this is the exact same architecture which we use in a production website, you can see on codedam.com. The what of this architecture is that we separate our front end and back end. Now I won't be going into too much details on the back end front in terms of technology. We're gonna just keep it a general back end related server. So it could be Fargate setup. For example, it could be a Lambda setup. It could be anything server or serverless. But the idea here is that this backend right here is most likely deployed as something like api.yourdomain.com, right? And your website, this real website is actually accessible on yourdomain.com, right? So what we are doing is we are separating the API area of interacting with the database or any other computation which needs to be securely done on a different server. Now the biggest reason for doing this is that now your front end does not need to be a server. It only needs to be a CDN. Why? Because your front end in most of the cases should be delivering static pages anyway, right? Either those are static pages or those are server side generated pages or those are server side rendered pages with some sort of caching in place, right? You don't necessarily want fully server-side render paged pages on every single refresh. This is usually computationally expensive and you have to do it only if your workflow really, really demands it for some reason. But in a lot of cases, you can get away with this. In a lot more, you can get away with this. So static side generation, not server-side generation, and server-side rendering plus caching. So assuming that you can get away with these two or you know these three at max it, if it covers your 97 percent of the use case that's a good enough reason to ditch a single server and use a global cdn as a front-end kind of thing for example when you deploy on let's say cloudfront or when you deploy on let's say Vercel, which also i think internally would use cloudfront or you deploy on something like cloudflare not exactly on Cloudflare, but behind Cloudflare. But even with like, you know, Cloudflare also has this concept of workers, which you can deploy. So when you deploy them on these two, three, four, five, six more cloud providers, which have this geolocation available on the world, then what happens is the moment somebody enters your domain, hit enter, the first result is immediately fetched by the user from a CDN, right? And then most likely this page is cached, so it's served like super fast. And even if it is not cached, if you're using static site generation, 
it gets rebuilt in the background where it can con continue to communicate with your backend API, which might be sitting in a serv single availability zone if you're using, let's say, a Lambda thing. So that's fine. This communication happens async in the background. And once that is ready, your fast page is already there to deliver um, to the end user, right? Now, once that page is delivered from the CDN, anything dynamic on the page should still be in some sort of loading state where your client now will make a call to this backend server, right? So this backend server, which is API dot whatever it is, can now be reached and now be used to fetch and just insert the remaining placeholders because your website, if they're kind of dynamic, if you're using a dynamic dashboard, chances are you would have a lot of static parts there anyway, like the sidebar, the footer of the website, the header of the website. This area might be a little bit dynamic, but fetch all the data for this from your backend API via your client, but make sure you're able to serve the first byte really quickly with the help of CDNs. And that is only possible if you have a distributed CDN network like this, which is serving static files to your users, instead of like worrying a lot about what should be the structure to handle backend calls here as well. Because you could technically deploy a lot of backend related stuff here, but databases, I believe, is still one of those things where you might get a little caught up because still most companies do prefer the standard MongoDB or MySQL or Postgres, which are usually, I mean, until you are using some new managed service from a cloud provider, which are usually restricted to a single availability zone or a single region, right? So you anyway have to have a VPC in that region where let's say your Lambda is running, which communicates with that. And you have to call that Lambda from pretty much everywhere across the world, right? This is this is at least what we follow right now on CodeDAM. If there is a way to use Lambda Edge somehow inside of a VPC and then call it and connect to a database, but then again, I don't think that might be possible because of the latency issue until your database itself is not globally distributed, which is like another topic altogether. But the thing here is what you have to realize that in the world, your front end could be localized, not really localized, your front end could be distributed. These all are your front end, right? And your back end, if it is in a single zone, this backend right here, which connects to the database as well, this should be not the bottleneck for loading your website, right? Because when somebody types your domain name, they would get the response directly from one of the CDNs, which is closer closer to them. Your pages can be generated statically on the backend, or you can do server-side rendering plus caching, which also happens on the backend. So it's again, super fast. And anything which you need dynamic from the front end can anyway be called directly from the backend API, right? You can fetch that and do that. This architecture is much, much better than the one where you serve everything from a single location. Let's say if you have a standard droplet or an EC2 instance where you're serving the assets and basically regular files and everything, not only you are using CPU out there, no matter how small for serving those files, but you're also hogging the network. You're also hogging a lot of resources, otherwise be used for the backend processing and computation, right? So just ditch the single server based model, switch to a model where your front ends at least are served from all over the world using a CDN like CloudFront, Vercel, Cloudflare, things like these. And your backend maybe if you want, it is localized to a specific location where inside the VPC, you also have access to your database. That's basically what we use at CodeDAM. And I believe this is something which you should use as well. I, I remember like one time I wrote this thing as a, one of the responses in a Twitter thread and the CEO of Vercel also approved with me on this architecture. So I guess it should work. And he's like a great coder, just an FYI. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you deploy a scalable front-end and back-end architecture. Let me know if this was helpful, if you learned something. If yes, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the CodeDAM's full stack learning path as well, where we will discuss a lot of such things in advanced side of things. So if you're interested in this topic, these things, make sure you check that out as well. And in general, you know the drill, like and subscribe, and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDAM's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching